Ready. On a typical day in your position, what do you do? On a typical day and a photo shoot or on a typical day in the office? They're two separate things. We'll start with on a photo shoot. You want to answer that first or you want me to answer first? I don't think there's actually a typical day. That's what I'm struggling with right now because my typical day will, I will start thinking it's one thing and it ends up being another depending on what clients I'm speaking to. Even though my agenda might be that I know that I have a photo shoot, there's a million other things that come into it. So I'm having a hard time with that already. Um, besides getting equipment ready, getting your headspace ready for the photo shoot that you're doing, and being on location, I, I don't know. I think there's so many other things involved. And I think that's why I love what I do because it's never a typical day. You start out maybe with one idea and even getting to a photo shoot, it, it, it accelerates into something else. That was Mad Max from Thunderdome right here. I didn't do an introduce with you. Have you ever seen the movie Mad Max, Thunderdome? Uh, I've, I think maybe a long time ago. I've seen the most recent Mad Max. Why are we diverting to because remember he was talking in the beginning and there was like that animated robot on the screen next to him? That's what this is like. Come on, work with me here. I shouldn't have to explain my humor. But you do. Oh. All right, so keep going. Uh, Wait, Lisa. Oh. Is, is that all you have to add? Probably. I'll probably interrupt you once you start talking. So... <laughs> Because is your day, your day, typically, I don't shoot all day. Like, um, there are days that I'm on location if, it, if it's something very specific that I'm shooting fashion. But most of, like last night, it was just shooting from 6.30 to 9 o'clock at night. And that's what I'll be doing tonight, too, because tonight I'm doing family as well. If it's a wedding, then I'm usually just shooting for six hours during the day. I'm preparing for that. Well, I have a bit of a tradition that I do before photo shoots in terms of weddings. Every, you're right, everything is different in terms of how the day unfolds, but um, in terms of, a, a, and I shoot differently than you do for weddings because I usually have eight to 10 hour booked days. You know, you get these bougie three hour weddings where they pay. Well, I'm, I'm a lot lazier than you, so. Well, no, you get these bougie three hour weddings where they pay you three times what I'm getting made paid no, for a 10 hour wedding. No, I don't, not at all. I try to work out with whatever plan I can, what's gonna fit for their day because everybody is different. And I'm not, I, mm. is this like a debate that I need to <laughs> stay quiet? I like to wake up every morning. I obviously, you know, I drink coffee. I always make to have a nice cup of coffee and I don't normally make my coffee. This is, this is true story. I don't normally make my coffee the night before for some reason, I don't know why. But I always make my coffee, the day of a wedding, I always make sure my coffee is made the day before because I like to wake up to a cup of coffee. So that's how I start my day. Do you set a timer? I do. do I set a timer for 5 a.m. and I wake up, pour myself a cup of coffee, I go outside of my patio and I read and I meditate every morning. But I do that specifically for wedding days. So I do have a bit of a tradition that I do there. But I agree with Lisa, in terms of preparation, you know, there's no such thing as the as a typical day because sometimes you have to travel someplace, sometimes you have to get in the car and take a road trip, sometimes your daughter has a soccer game at 8 a.m. and you want to go try to catch the first half before your wedding, sometimes you have a photo shoot before the wedding like we had this past Saturday. We were photographing down at Carowinds for a uh, company event, so me and Tori were down there for two hours and then I scooted over to the wedding. Um, I think it just kind of goes down to read the room. I, I know I say that a lot, but really just kind of know your environment and what you're getting into and what the wedding's all about and being able to just be flexible and adaptive for the day. Would you agree with that? Absolutely, but I think I get, and we've talked about this too, I get a little bit nerdy before that, that I need, even though I have everything ready, I need that moment that still moment alone with my mind and my thoughts to just, I think when you're, when you're switching hats all the time, you need to stop with some of the business stuff and get into your creative mode. And I just need that time to, to meditate on that or whatever you want to call that. Just have that space where I'm, I'm, um, getting myself amped up to do what I'm going to be doing and hope that, you know, it's not just technical, it's being creative, having those creative energies flow. Yeah, that's a good point. I didn't really think about that. That's not really part of a tradition for me. It's just that 
I don't like to really talk a lot on wedding days. I used to have this assistant that would drive with me to photo shoots or wedding days and she was always talking to me and I, I finally had to be like, you just gotta stop talking. I can't like, I can't engage in a conversation with you right now. I'm trying to get my head in the game around what I'm gonna do today and she would just keep talking to me. I'd be like, shut up and let me think. So I'm with Lisa on that one. Well, and it's not like you have a set out agenda. You do have a set out agenda, but once you get there, the the energy of the day there's it's, it's it's like a catalyst and it might take you somewhere else where you didn't prepare to be but i think when you've got your mindset around it you're prepared and, and you're creative and you're open to to all those things to happen and take it to the next level but i need that moment beforehand i don't want to hit the ground running i want to get there and be more in the moment and feel what's going on and i need that time to just i don't know it's like a visual meditation i like to visualize the day i like to see how the day might unfold and it's based upon the location, it's based upon the client, it's based upon um, the vendors, it's based upon how involved you are in terms of, you know, you have some weddings where you're literally doing everything for the, for the bride and the groom. And you have some weddings where you have a really good vendor crew, like this past wedding, where you know that everyone's gonna pull the weight. But I literally have had weddings some mornings where I've had the bride calling me in tears saying she hadn't heard from her florist or she hadn't heard from the DJ or she hadn't heard back from the venue. Is there anything you can do to help me out? And I, you know, I spend the morning getting on the phone to people and finding out what the F is going on. So, um, but if all things being equal and all things being perfect for, well, there's no such thing, but if all things being casually, relatively already set up, I kind of like to visualize the day and I play it out in my head and you know, I'll look at some photographs I've done with them on engagement session and I've already, if I already know the venue, I'll play stuff all over in my head in terms of like, I call it a soft schedule. Like I knew for this past wedding on Saturday that we were gonna walk the block. Um, we're gonna do one square, square mile basically around the block is what we were gonna do. Um, and we were gonna hit a bunch of different spots. And so I try to visualize like the night before I walked out that, that block, I just kind of wanted to just kind of have some stuff in my head. And so I visualized what I walked off just so I could kind of see what I might do with them. And then of course I didn't realize that the Gay Pride Festival was going on and we had to be adaptive and flexible and we ended up shooting in the parade itself. And so that was always cool, but anyway. I think that's- So basically just gave her a super long-winded evasive answer. No, I think it was a very detailed answer, in fact. Okay. Are you taking notes of the stuff that I'm putting down? Always. Good, because this will help you improve your craft. I know. I know. Well, I, when, when I'm, I'm holding, problems, when I'm holding the hand entourage. mallet, that, wait, sorry, go ahead. Go again. I don't have a whole entourage like you do, so that makes it difficult. When you have the hand mallet, that means you should be taking notes. <laughs> or you can talk. That's the talking stick. <laughs> I can never reach it though. That's a problem. Perfect. <laughs> All right, go. Second question. Uh, what additional training or ed education did you require for this type of work? You going first? Uh, I didn't have additional education. I just, I've been in it for decades. And decades and decades. A lot longer um, than me. Pardon me? Did you just say I that? said I nothing. Sorry. I said nothing. Okay. It was positive, right? Um, so, I, you know, I hate to say that, but no, I didn't have any education. I just, I found my way into it um, through mm -hmm. uh, just kind of what I was doing. It just was a natural progression. And um, just kind of grew with it. And I think it's just through actually getting out there and doing it that you just keep growing and learning and making mistakes and improving and all of that. So yeah, no formal education. Knew. I graduated from Harvard's School of Photography. I knew you were gonna say that. I graduated from Harvard School of Photography, magna cum laude in 1997, two years ahead of the rest of my class. I was valedictorian of the photography club. No, I've got no formal training whatsoever. I'm a hack. I've been a hack from the beginning of life. I'm a hack. I'm like Jerry Rig McGee, right? <laughs> but, but there's always gonna be people that can technically talk circles around you. But it's, it's being able to get out there and actually do it and being able to perform. You know, I tell this story a lot, so you've probably heard it before, but I, I, photography, it, it truly fascinates me. It just, 
I'm a bit of an esoterical thinker and you know, we can go into that philosophically if you want, I can ramble for hours on that. But the whole idea of this, our existence in this time and space and the memories that we create every single day and all of the people that come in and out of our lives every single day. And my sister early on was taking photographs when I was really young and I used to get really annoyed because she'd walk around taking photographs of everybody. And it wasn't until I started seeing her have this film produced that I realized how fucking cool photography really is. And it wasn't until I started taking my own photographs at you know, young age, 12, 13, 14 years old from a stolen camera that I realized how fucking cool photography really is. And, and being able to, I, I say it a lot, but being able to take this moment, this conversation we're having right here that we're recording for posterity's sake, for our three people that are gonna watch it on YouTube, nonetheless, like, this is a moment that we froze in time and you know, getting messages from clients this morning saying that they're in tears and can't stop watching their photographs and like, it gives me goosebumps and being able to, I'm getting goosebumps telling the stories of that kind of stuff and being able to capture that um, for them, good, bad, ugly, indifferent, whatever it is, it's subjective, but being able to capture that, you're like, it's a marvelous thing to have that talent and be gifted with something for someone, right? And so in terms of my training, I have no formal training other than it's the training of life. You know, I read everything I possibly can on photography. I study lighting like there's nobody's business. I, I photograph in pitch black environments on a regular basis just so I can understand how light works. I will literally go downtown at midnight and just take photos of places when there's nobody on the streets because I wanna see what it looks like when it reflects off of a building. And, or just getting in the car and going out into a, a field and taking photographs of moons and things like that. Like I'm constantly practicing and Lisa's the same way. We're constantly just trying to improve our craft. And so, you know, I read a lot of books. I follow a lot of great photographers. I have a really good book that I'm really fond of that I've had for many years. This guy named Herb Ritz. And, you know, I've been following his work for years and I bought this book and you can see by the wear and tear of it, how many times I look at this book. And, um, <laughs> And she had, Lisa has the same, very same book. No, no it's, it's breathtaking photography. Yeah, he is. It, it is, it truly. But so as you ask about learning, like the, the last photo shoot I did was specifically inspired by his work. And so, you know, Lisa has 6,000 photography books and I steal one every time I'm at her house. And it's, um, I don't have to, I don't want to buy it. She's like, that's a perfect checkout library situation. And um, she lets me keep them indefinitely. And I always return them. And um, it's just, it's inspiring. So that's my training. Like I'll see stuff that is like blows me away. And I'm like, fuck, I'm gonna go out and practice that very work. And I will literally go out and try to recreate the photos on my own, but with my own interpretation. And that's, that's my training, right? Would you agree with that? Yeah, can I interject? Yeah. A, I find it really interesting that when you speak, you give yourself goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> I was giving goosebumps from a, my client that sent me a message. <laughs> it's a little, a little no, it wasn't me giving me goosebumps. It was. Yeah, well, that's not how it came across. I'm a big deal. You should know that. I, you, B, you obviously don't understand the concept of a library borrowing and returning. And C, when we're talking about education and everything, I, I think when you're in a creative industry, people um, view it differently. And I still have people after all of these years, and I'm telling you, it's been a lot of years, say to me, oh, are you still taking pictures? They don't realize that it's, it's, it's part of your life and it's a profession and it's kind of how you, you end up living your life. Like it, it changes the dynamic of your life. It's never a nine to five. You're creatively thinking about it or adding to it or growing or having experiences or meeting people or affecting people's lives or they're affecting your life. It's so much more than just the education that you would receive in school, which I'm not, I'm not downplaying. Like it's good to have as much knowledge as power and all that, but there's so much more to practicing it as well and taking it to the next level. I think when people ask you that you're, and they ask you, they're kind of shocked when they ask you if you're still taking photographs. I think they're more blown away that you're not already in a, in a group home or in a wheelchair somewhere, that you're still as fit as- I know, really at this stage of my life, I should be kept woman. I'm just saying I should not still have to work. I should have diamonds encrusted all over me, but yeah, I try to stay humble. Yeah, yeah, so I, that's why I was adding that last piece in there so you did stay humble. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. whatever. 
What is a work schedule like? Hours per week, hours per day, overtime, travel? Six to ten every day. <laughs> I'm serious. Six in the morning till ten at night every day. I, I'm going to take that one step deeper. There, It is six to ten, but it's also four to four. It's also one to one. It's There's no schedule. There is... <clears throat> The job dictates the expectations that you that you need to fulfill, and you know that's responding to text messages at, at midnight. That's getting emails, and you know I have a philosophy that when an when an incoming client comes in, no matter what time it is, I respond within minutes if I can. I follow up with text messages. You know, today I've been working out and building new poker chips, and I've been working on a website, and I've put out two editing jobs. Are you proud of me? I got two jobs out today. I have been feeding feeding four kids that somehow my family grew the last two days to two more kids. I've been chasing down two dogs in the middle of the street that, so they wouldn't get hit by the new construction going on. Like, there's no such thing as hours. It's just, you know, I've got meetings this afternoon with clients, I've got walkthroughs. It, there's just no such thing. You just, you do what you do. What You do what needs to be done when it has to be done and you learn to manage your time really effectively and you learn to compartmentalize stuff. And like as I was telling you earlier, for me, I try to, group up my days on what I do. Mondays and Tuesdays for me are typically in the office here at the house working on things that need to be done in the office. Wednesdays through Fridays are usually dedicated to photo shoots. I do boudoirs on Fridays. I do families and engagements on Wednesdays and Thursdays. That's just kind of like my shtick. And I don't typically let people book outside that. Um, if I have consults, I usually try to do them on Wednesdays and Thursdays before my photo shoots and then I go straight into photo shoots and then weddings, Saturdays, weddings, if it's destination out of town, wet weekends are, are, are for weddings. Um, and travel and that's kind of my thing and there's so much in between all that that goes on and you know you're an accounting department you're the marketing department you're the public relations department you are the project management department you're the CEO you're the dig dig the hole in the trench you're everybody and so um, even though we have people that we work with that collectively add to that you're still responsible in the end for everything and if you fuck up you fuck up your company and so you know you're you live or die by the seat of your pants kind of thing you like you either step up pull up or you don't and so you know as an entrepreneur you just you're constantly you're always grinding right i mean anything de deviate from pull up a lot lately so let me just summarize what you said basically you're a superhero that's that's what i got from that correct i'm glad you feel that way thank you i feel the same <laughs> it's hard to hide the cape all the time but I should put my cape on right now. You know I do own a cape. Yeah. Okay. Alright. Ask the next question. She's gonna answer why I put my cape on. Uh, what is the possibilities of advancement and promotion? With Devo? Slim to none. <laughs> True, because he's already the owner. Can't get much higher than that. <laughs> mm. Alright, what are you talking about advancement? As, as someone that's working with a photographer with a photographer or are you talking about being um, self-employed photographer and what, where you can go with it self-employed oh, photographer I'm sorry I, I got distracted by the cape what did you say self-employed photographer or even I, just you know like... what it, it comes down to how much time you want to put into it and how much effort you put into it and, and what your direction is and what you're willing to like where do you want to go with it? Do you want to travel? Do you want to stay in one spot? Do you want to do weddings? Do you want to do commercial work? Do you want to do architecture? And from, from kind of knowing what what is your um, forte or what interests you and inspires you, I don't think there is, you know, it's that whole thing, Sky Gorman, you know, what you put in is what you get out. Honestly, that's what I believe. I, I think, um, I heard everything you said while I was putting my cape on. Um, the sky is the limit. Absolutely, that's probably the best nutshell response for that. I, I know photographers who, who make half a million dollars revenue in their masters at selling prints and they only work once or twice a month. I know uh, that's not me. I, I'm not good at selling prints like that. In fact, I probably give away too much in my business. And, um, you know, for me, I, I left the corporate world, but I was making a shit ton of money in the corporate world. And living a life that really did not satisfy me and I was working you know honestly I was working 16 17 hours a day I was all over the place traveling 
I rarely saw my kids. Um, photography was a side hustle at the time and I was not able to put in the time and energy that I wanted to and I was spending most of my time doing that other stuff and for me it's not necessarily about the money I although I love making money because I like having nice things and money is what kind of is the motor of our world but for me it, it really came down to what am I passionate about what makes me smile at the end of the day and why do I want to continue grinding away at things if I'm not happy about it and so photography became a full-time hustle from a side side hustle for those very reasons and while I'm making decent money at photography and I want to make more of it I will make more of it um, it's not my primary motivation for business. It's really changing people's lives is what's important to me. I know that sounds cliche, um, but we're difference makers. I mean, at the end of the day, every single day, both of us get messages from clients who we previously worked with that sometimes bring me to tears. And, and for me, call me narcissistic if you will, but man, that's what motivates me, honestly, is like when my clients see their photos and they start crying, like, fuck yeah, I just kicked that job's ass. And that, for me, is that's, that's what makes me happy. And I like doing that. And there's, I don't know how many people can say that. Truly, I don't know how many people can say that. Right? Mm -hmm. We kind of live vicariously through other people. Does that make us leeches? I don't know. But we are, like we had talked about the other day, being like a moment maker. You create moments and you think some of these things that you that you maybe take for granted, like, oh, I'm going to go and do another proposal, or I'm going to go and do this shoot, it, you you become a moment in their life that, you know, they can talk about and say it was really fun, and it's not just you that's had fun, they've had fun, you've had a connective experience, and that's really, I'm not sure how many, how many people can say that they have that included in almost every day of their, their work day, that's, that's a pretty special thing, I don't know if it becomes your crack that you just, you you kind of feed off of that and you experience that and you really enjoy it and that's one of the reasons why you do it it's it's you always have a takeaway where you've had a great experience with someone i'd say 99 percent of the time yeah and, and not every client loves what you do there are some photography is subjective but honestly you read our reviews most people are absolutely flabbergasted with what we do and that's not to be vain it's just that you know i don't think they expect what they when people come to us for photography, I don't think they expected to receive what they actually got, right? Would it would be that would that be a fair assessment? Just finding the right match, you yeah. Finding the right client. Yeah. yeah. I send a testimonial. I send a testimonial off to every client after the photo shoot, and the question says, "Just can you please recant how great I am, just so that yeah. I can read it at night, right? Isn't that what you do? Yeah, we we write it for them, and they just put their name in. It. Please, like, please sign on the dotted line. Yeah. Date. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> and then we post it all over Instagram and we just read it time and time again. Oh, I am so amazing. I know. It's super bougie too. <laughs> <laughs> Next, please get shut me up. <laughs> what are our related occupations? Related what? What are our related occupations? What are related occupations you could do instead of this job? Dolphin trainer. Herpologist. The skills oh, you oh. receive from this job. You go. I just want to copy your answers and make fun of you. I don't know. There's a lot of skills that go into it. I think. I think. I, I, maybe it's just me because I'm a little OCD. I use both sides of my brain. I think. So you do a lot of accounting, and I, I do that sort of thing where I like doing the business side of it, and I like doing the creative side of it. I've always had this. Um, I don't know if it's good or bad, but I look at something and I always think how I can make it better. Process so whether improvement. It's, whether it's interior design, whether it, there's just always something that I, you know, you put your own spin on and how you make it better. So process improvement. That's you. I like that. No, you are. It's truly are. You are. You. You. That's what I said the other day. You have an analytical mind, and you're always looking at things of. Uh, from the inspiration of how can you make that be a little bit better, whether it's decor, whether it's what you're wearing, whether it's what you say to people, whether it's how you, like that's one of the things that's so endearing about you, not to give you a bigger head than you already have, but I meant physically. Um, but you know, that whole space is around your process improvement. I love that about you. It's a nice way of saying that I'm pretty judgy. <laughs> Go around and judge people. <laughs> Um, I, I, I agree with what she said in terms of, and I, I don't want, I don't want to rehash it, but you, you know, you, you have to, 
you have to learn a lot of crafts if you want to be an entrepreneur and if you want to be a photographer. And it's not just photography. I, you know, I, I told you when you first came over here, Sharina, to do this internship with me, that photography business is about 80% business and 20% photography. And, and, and that's a true statement. I, I had somebody once say to me, man, you have the life of dreams. You work one Saturday and then you get to play around the rest of the week. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me, man? Do you know what goes on in my life Monday through Friday and Sunday? <laughs> so, yeah, you've got to be marketing, public relations. You have to be a good writer. I've become an exceptional writer by becoming a blogger for my own business. You have to be crafty. You have to be kind of humorous. You have to be kind of engaging and charismatic because... You know, you need social media to sell your product, to engage with your clientele. You've gotta be a project manager because you gotta be able to manage all the different things that go on. You have to be a bit of a visionary because you've got to look at, you can never just be satisfied with what you have going on. You've gotta be able to grow and evolve with your client base, with your technology, with the way you do business, with social media, all the different things. So honestly, you're like a Swiss army knife, truly. Like you've gotta have a lot of different transferable skills if you wanna succeed. Or you, otherwise, you're just a picture taker with a, with an expensive camera. But I think that too part of part of your chemistry as well. If you didn't have this innate quality, like all of those qualities, and wanting to improve, things would become boring because people will say, "Well, you've been doing wedding for X, weddings for X amount of years. Don't you grow tired of it?" But you make it a different experience every time. Same with like I've just edited through the the pictures that I shot last night, and looking at them is like. Okay, I'm going to say there's, there's pictures that I love and there's pictures that I look at and say, okay, I want to have that sort of engagement happen again or this is what I like or I want to try this next time. It's, it's just keeping yourself involved and interested and wanting to, to just go the extra mile every time. Otherwise, it would be, you'd, you'd stay me. And you have to be social media gurus, I would like to add. And this is a plug for something that Lisa and I are walking down now. Um, is, is providing counsel and consulting services for other photographers who are looking to get their message and looking to engage and grow their social media. And, you know, don't laugh, but, you know, social media is, is dominating our lives and it's only going to continue to grow. And so I had to learn the hard way because I used to just disavow social media. I hated it. I'm uncomfortable talking about myself and sharing private moments about my life. But the more I have gotten in bed with social media, the more I realize that it's not so much narcissistic to talk about yourself, it's that you're trying to find your tribe and so you've gotta be engaging with the people you're trying to sell your product to and your service to so that they can look at you and be like, you know what, there are 626 photographers that just came up in my Google ranking or Google search for photographers in Charlotte or Hilton Head and they're gonna go to your website and they're gonna go to your social media and they're gonna try to find people that they can engage with but they can imagine themselves spending 10, 12 hours or the rest of their life with taking photos. Are you gonna let your kid run around with me in a park? Is my mom and my grandma gonna like you? Like these are the things that people think about. And if you don't have some sort of social media presence and acumen about you and a skill to kind of engage with people in your authentic and genuine self, they're just gonna move on to the next person. And so I think I'm saying that the right way without coming across as being a, as a snob, Absolutely. but. You're creating a community that thrive in and it also I think it's caused us both I think we've grown a lot and we've learned a lot in our process of it and we're enjoying it more and it's more of a, a, a love now than maybe it was in the beginning from the things that we've learned but I think as well you you um, you have to take that time to figure out what exactly you want to do what you want to accomplish where you want your business to go so there's a lot of you know reflection that you're doing as well which is really important in business i think that causes you to just figure out exactly what you want to do and who you want to connect with and where you want your business to go and, and kind of causes you to have a direction as well i love that thanks for recapping that more eloquently all right next question what person <clears throat> excuse me what personal qualities are important to being successful in this career <laughs> what personal qualities? Uh, okay, I've always been a super shy person, like really shy, easily intimidated, all of that. I felt <clears throat> I used to. I used to a long time ago be on the other side of the camera. I'm much more comfortable being on this side of the camera. I think loving people, just loving 
the um, 